Hello and welcome to this lesson in the OCR GCSE Computer Science uh, series. This is the first lesson of Unit 2 which looks at computational thinking. Uh, before we start there are three questions which you can have a think about. I'd like you to think uh, where was that picture taken? What is the arch constructed of? And then kind of how you work that out. So I'd like you to have a quick look on the internet and see what you can find out around uh, that question. And this is going to link into the uh, different programming skills that we look at uh, later on today. As I said, this lesson is the first of Unit 2. Uh, unit 2 looks at algorithms and programming, and this first lesson is all around computational thinking. Where does that sit within the, the bigger picture? Well, there are five sections to Unit 2. Algorithms, programming fundamentals, producing robust programs, Boolean logic and programming languages and IDEs. And this is the very first lesson, so computational thinking right in the top left hand corner. Within this lesson, we're going to look at computational thinking as a term and what that means when we start to think about creating our own computer programs. We're going to look at the terms decomposition and abstraction as well as pattern recognition and algorithms. And you're going to learn how to apply those both within an exam situation, but also when creating your own computer programs. So in terms of the very quick uh, starter activity, hopefully you found out uh, a little bit of information around that arch. And without knowing it, in doing that, you've used some computational skills already. I'm guessing nobody went to Google and typed in where is the arch with the uh, yellow car in front of it, the dome-shaped building behind it, uh, or any of those sorts of extended sort of questions. I'm guessing we typed in large metal arch and, and narrowed down from there. And in doing that, you've already used a range of different computational thinking skills. So what is it? What is computational thinking? Well, it is a set of tools that give us the ability to express problems in a way that a computer can be programmed to understand. Um, whenever you create a computer program, you want to be thinking about these computational thinking uh, skills. Why do we need those? Well, as, as human beings, our brains are constantly working and thinking for us. They calculate on a behalf. When I walk to the side of a street, my brain has already worked out, can I cross the road before that car uh, gets to me or do I need to stop? A computer is not quite like that though. Everything a computer does needs to be programmed into it uh, by a human. Uh, when we think about a game like uh, FIFA, every single action within that game has been programmed in by a, by a user, by a programmer. You can't just wake up and decide, right, tomorrow I'm going to teach a computer how to play football. We need to think and break that down using a problem-solving skill set. Fortunately, we have a skill set and it is called computational thinking. There are four cornerstones to uh, computational thinking. We've got decomposition, abstraction, pattern recognition and algorithms. We're going to look during the course of this video at what those different uh, sections mean and what each one of those contains in terms of our problem solving process. Now, if we were doing this in class, I would uh, split you up into groups of twos or threes, and I would ask you to, by yourself, write some instructions to draw a monster. And I'd like you to write those down as if you were uh, teaching a computer. So you can't say things like draw a head, but you can say draw a circle of radius three centimeters, for example. You can't say draw a leg, but you can say draw a forward line of five centimeters and then turn 90 degrees. Okay, so uh, you may wish to pause the video at this point, or you may wish to just think about how you would, uh, how you would do that. Now the point of this activity is that your monster probably didn't look the way you were expecting. You probably wrote set down some instructions that in your head made perfect sense, but when given to somebody else who was following those instructions absolutely literally to the letter, uh, 
they probably didn't make quite as much sense and if your monster was close um, well done but for most people your monster probably doesn't look anywhere near uh, the monster you were expecting when you wrote your instructions the reason for that is that you weren't thinking computationally enough you hadn't broken down the problem in a way a computer would be able to understand there are no such things as, as rubbish computers. There are rubbish programs and poor instructions, um, but all a computer is doing is following those instructions to the letter. When a computer crashes, it's because the instructions don't make sense or the uh, instructions are looping infinitely or there is a, an error message with nothing attached to it, um, a problem, something has happened with no uh, error message linked to it. So, how do we make our thinking computational? Well, we follow the four cornerstones. The first cornerstone is decomposition. Now, this is one of those complex words that really means something quite straightforward. Decomposition is the ability to break down a problem into clear, logical and ideally equally sized parts. Let's think about something like Google Maps. Uh, Google didn't wake up one day and think that they were going to map the entire Earth. That's not possible. What they probably did do is start by uh, programming a street, storing a street's worth of information, and then a town, and then a city, and growing from there. If we break down the problem of mapping every road on Earth, it becomes quite manageable. If we try and do it in one massive go, it's really not mass, uh, massively manageable at all. When you think about your monsters, we could have broken that down into the head, the torso, the arms and the legs. Um, we could have possibly given each person in our group a different body part to draw and that may have led to our monsters being slightly more uh, the way we imagined when they were drawn by somebody else. A nice drawn example uh, everyday activities we decompose uh, without thinking. Things like making breakfast can split down into making toast and making tea. Um, and each of those activities can then break down even further if required. This would be exactly the same when creating a computer program. If I was creating the next version of a FIFA game, I would think about crossing the ball, passing the ball, shooting the ball, um, as different tasks that different members of the team could each work on. Now you may wish to stop the video at this point and take a look at this activity. Uh, come up with an everyday activity that you think could be uh, decomposed and draw yourself a diagram similar to the one on the previous slide. Pause the video at this point and give that one a go. The next and second cornerstone of computational thinking is abstraction. Abstraction means the removal of specific information that we don't need to solve the task right now. That doesn't mean it's information that is pointless, but it's information that really we're not going to worry about right this second. For example, if we were teaching a very young child to draw a cat, we would worry about the fact that a cat has a tail, fur, eyes, a head, but we probably wouldn't worry about the exact size and the exact colour of each of those. We could filter those out in the early part of the drawing uh, learning journey. If I'm thinking about modern computer games, there are still things, uh, still examples of places where they use abstraction. The most recent FIFA games still don't account for things like wind, Many driving games don't account for things like animals. There are real life bits of information that we ignore. We can think about different levels of, abs of abstraction. When a driver is looking at a car, they ignore certain things that an automotive engineer would worry about. When the car parts designer uh, is designing the electronic control unit, they're thinking about certain things that both the driver and the automotive engineer would have ignored. So we can think about different levels of abstraction, different users being able to ignore different parts. If you were doing your monster relatively quickly, you probably would have ignored certain things. 
eyebrows, eyelashes, those sorts of things probably didn't need to be included and if you did try to include them probably meant that your instructions were over complex and never ever completed. Pause the video at this point and draw yourself a table like this in your book or on some paper. Two columns, general characteristics and specific characteristics. When we think about abstraction, we can categorize into general characteristics and specific characteristics uh, different parts of, say, a computer game. If I was early on in the design process of a FIFA game, I would probably ignore specific detail and focus more on the general information that I really need to get going. Look at the eight statements on your screen and see if you can categorize those into your table as either general characteristics or specific characteristics. Pause at this point and the answers are on uh, in the next couple of seconds. There are the answers. As I say, people in the early design process probably wouldn't worry about individual players, individual team lineups or kits. They would though worry about the fact that a team needs a goalkeeper, but not who the goalkeeper is. While there are uh, four cornerstones of computational thinking, the OCR GCSE groups the last two together under this umbrella term algorithmic thinking. Now that is the, pro uh, the process of solving problems through a use of clearly defined algorithms that can be used time after time and it includes pattern recognition and algorithms. Pattern recognition is looking at our decomposed problem and identifying any activities that are similar, any activities where the code that we might create could be repeated. If we've already taught a football player on a computer to pass the ball, teaching them to shoot the ball shouldn't be all that different we're going to change the velocity with which the ball is hit and probably the direction but the rest of the process could probably be reused. An algorithm is a, another complicated word that means something quite simple. It is a step-by-step -step set of instructions or set of code to solve the problem and if we follow the algorithm exactly we should always end up with the same end result. If we look at our example from earlier of making breakfast, there are certain activities there that are similar tasks or pattern type tasks. Buttering the toast and adding jam to the toast are very similar. I would change where the knife was dipped beforehand in each, uh, each case, but the rest of the activity would be exactly the same. If I was programming that, I wouldn't start from scratch when programming the add jam element if I already had the butter toast element working. I'd look to reuse as much of that as I could. Algorithms come in many forms. Uh, the, quite a famous example on the screen looking at the friendship algorithm from the Big Bang Theory. But also things like recipes or uh, any form of cooking instructions. Um, if we follow those instructions to the letter every time and all of the inputs, that means the weight of the ingredients, the temperature of the oven for example are the same, the cake should always work. We look at our decomposed problem, we ignore the pieces of information we don't need, we look for any activities that are similar and repeat them where we can and then follow the algorithm to the letter. Now those are the four cornerstones of computational thinking. Those are the problem solving techniques we should use whenever we approach a, pro uh, a problem that we want to teach to a computer. We break down the problem. We ignore the information that isn't really necessary right now. We look for any patterns in any code that can be reused and then we start to design our algorithm, our set of instructions that the computer will follow to the letter every time. As a final activity, think about uh, RoboCode as an example. 
Now RoboCode is a computer program that pits artificially intelligent tanks against one another. Different players create uh, different tanks and they battle to the death. Tanks can scan for others, fire at others when scanned, sense when targeted, targeted and move. I'd like you to develop an algorithm for your tank. Now this can be in whatever format you like, anything from a set of instructions bullet pointed to a written paragraph. How should your tank move? When should it scan for others? How should it fire? And how often should it fire? And what should it do when it senses that it has been targeted by another player? Use the computational thinking uh, tool set while doing this. Break down the problem that's partially been done for you. Think about the bits of information you're not going to worry about. Think and try and identify any patterns and then write down your algorithm. How should your tank work to mean that it will outlast the other tanks? Finally, this is your uh, revision map. These are the key bits of information that you absolutely need to know as a takeaway from this lesson. You need to be able to talk about what computational thinking is, the four cornerstones, and then be able to apply those to a given problem in the exam. Hopefully this video has been of some use. If uh, it has been, please do check out some of the other videos on this channel. If you have any questions, as always, please post those either on Google Classroom or in the comments section below. Thank you very much.